we all know the value of the new. The new changes our lives, it engineers progress, it shapes the future. But what is the new? When we first meet the new, it's always never quite what we expected it to be like. It feels useless, it feels threatening, it feels disruptive to the way we normally run our lives. It always feels easier, better to do without the new. Today, I want to talk about the new in language. Language, by definition, is something old. The age of language itself is secured it secures for it two things. Firstly, a stable community of speakers, and secondly, a stable, consistent manner of, of use. That means the two things being uh, people who will speak this language together and people who know what is the vocabulary, the syntax, um, the structures of the language and know how to communicate with each other. So today, I want to talk about Singlish, Ken. <laughs> Over the years, Singlish uh, has gone out a lot of bad press from the government, from the schools, from a lot of sectors you know, who believe in English. We don't get the sense of what the broader use of Singlish is other than you, know, you just buy food for the Kopitiam or the Hawker Centre or trying to find the jamban after that when you kena food poisoning. <laughs> it feels too kampong, the use of Singlish. It seems to be at odds um, with um, of Singaporean pursuit of excellence, pursuit of economic progress in the international world. So is Singlish the enemy of English? Is it the enemy of business English? But you see, in this stigmatization, what we all fail to notice is that Singlish may well not be a creature of the old. What if it's the creature of the new? Here are three thoughts. I want to share with you this evening. Firstly, Singlish is only as old as the concept of multicultural Singapore. That means there has been no Singlish before there was a multicultural Singapore, and it cannot exist, cannot not exist, as long as we as Singaporeans remain multicultural. There are two fundamental pillars of Singlish, and this is firstly, Kampong life, because in Kampong life, um, which is village life, when Singapore was uh, not as progressive decades ago, um, diverse people would talk across languages. People from different communities would learn how other people speak and then communicate with them by means of how he or she knows how to speak. Secondly, there is commerce, and commerce is um, a, a way in which people from different countries, different communities outside Singapore find a way to meet, to exchange things, to buy things, to sell things, but also through those, um, they achieve a kind of common goal of trying to understand each other. So people come into contact. Now, as far as our same, same future is about building some global kampong or some global village, Singapore, or rather Singlish, is actually very relevant. The future, if you start to think about it, will actually sound a lot like Singlish rather than English. Secondly, Singlish is a version of a global language. Speakers of Singlish do this. They find something in their own stamp language that can overcome its own language barrier. So what we do is that in the language that we normally speak, we move from the inward-looking part and we move to the borders, to the accessible, outward-looking part and there create com communication with other people from a different language sector. Singlish is therefore very open to the involvement of other languages and to the developments within languages. It is more able to do what we call poton jalan, eh? Um, which is potong kat, jalan means walk. Um, you potong jalan across distinct grammars and syntaxes. You create a way where previously there was no way to communicate. 
Is this not how English itself uh, developed and become the global language of our time today? After all, English has developed for 1,500 years by absorbing German, Celtic, Latin, French, and words from um, different British colonies like Singapore and Malaysia and India. If you look at how English developed, it shifts. It began as Old English, 500 to 1100 AD, to Middle English, which was spoken 1100 AD to 1500 AD, to Early Modern English during the 17th century to the 19th century, and arriving at what we get now, which is English in the 20th century onwards. In other words, English itself hasn't been stable. It's also always changing. Do you know, for example, that the word one, two, three in English came long ago from the German word ein, zwei, drei? Did you know, for example, that less than three lifetimes of Singlish ago, people were still saying thou art and thee. Today, we say you are and you and I, right? And also, notice that in Singlish itself, the words that we have are always changing. And that is an interesting aspect. You never expect to see this on the TED stage, huh? <laughs> we have the Malay word hantam. It becomes hantam at some stage. And now we say hamtam, right? The word is changing. Um, we say pancit in Malay. And then at some point, we say pancik with a K. And now we say pomcik. We say, ah, but then, long time ago, as a way to show disbelief or, you know. Um, but now we say, ah, but then. <laughs> and also consider how Singlish is about mixing different words together. So the word buetahan, the phrase buetahan we use, uh, which means I cannot stand it anymore, comes from, uh, in part, Hokkien, in part, Malay. We have the word relax one corner, which was what I was doing before this which is one part Malay, one part English. And then we have steady pun pipi, which means uh, very good, eh? excellent, um, like a lot of TED speeches so far. Steady is English, pun pipi is Hokkien. So, you know, in this, we see that Singlish is evolving, and that is my third point. Singlish's evolution actually proves its trend towards a more global form. Because why? Singlish is still changing. And because it's still changing, it's open to influences from any source it comes into contact with. A Finnish language is useless to outsiders. A Finnish language has no future for, uh, in a multicultural society because a multicultural language resides between languages. Singlish's openness and its fluid, fluidity is therefore actually its strength. But yet, because of its shifting status, Singlish lends itself very often to being treated badly by people who don't understand what it's actually doing. They think it's teaching our kids bad English, it thinks that it's doing all sorts of horrible things to people's minds. It is reflecting and encouraging the psychic interaction among people. More than we believe, therefore, Singlish needs our support and our love now. We have in Singlish a very unique, powerful and un unconscious national invention. I don't think anyone actually set out to plan this. It may well prove to be our Singaporean one national resource in a country that doesn't have any. Singlish may well be our great contribution to the world of inventions and to the world of languages. It is practical, it's good-natured, it's funny, it's self-deprecating, it's succinct, it's futuristic, it's identity-clarifying, it's communal, and most importantly, it's people-powered. With Singlish, if you therefore dare to keep your heart on it, while, of course, speaking good English, we can help make ourselves into the hub of how the future speaks. So, 
I'd like to thank you today. <laughs> As we would say, I hope you enjoy um, the, the time here. And in Singlish, we say, Songbo. Thank you. <laughs>